sometimes it's the little details that take your outfit to the next level. Hello, I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja, and I'm going to teach you how to do an adorable little edging on any shirt you already have. Hey, are you new to my channel? Consider pressing the subscribe button below. You can also hit the bell and it will notify you every time I upload a new video. I want to hear from you, so leave a comment below. I want to teach you to sew like a ninja. A pico or a scalloped edge, these little ups and downs, ups and downs. And you can achieve this look on your regular sewing machine with a stitch you already have. I'm going to flip it over so you can see what this stitch looks like. That's it. This is actually a blind hem stitch that you would use to blind hem stitch pants. And in this case, we're going to turn it into a scalloped edge for a t-shirt or the edge of a dress. Imagine this along the sleeve edges. Oh my God, adorable. Okay, so all it is is a couple of straight stitches and then the machine zigs out and back. And it's that zig, that single zig, that pulls in each of these scallops. The key to making this work well is the where you place the fabric. And we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you that. Real quick, here is a sample on... Here is a sample on cotton lycra. This is a regular band that you would use on any knit shirt you were making. So it is um, two layers that I searched the edge of so it would mimic a neck band. And it's actually still stretchy. Let me show you. Stretch, 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 stretch. So you don't have to worry about this stopping your neck edge from stretching. You will still have give to it. So that's your plain cotton lycra. This is a Hanes t-shirt. So this is actually a knit rib. Let's get, get way down there so you can see it. This is a knit ribbing. Woo, I can't see anything. Okay. This is a fine piece of fabric. You can see how you look through it. It is a woven. And I've done it two ways. Here it is on the bias, so the diagonal. And it has pretty nice scallops on this too. They're really lovely. And you can also do it on the straight of grain. The scallops are not quite as pronounced. You just have to be aware that where it is stretchier on the bias or on knit fabric, you're going to get more pronounced scallops. So let's go learn the technique. The stitch we're using today is when you have on your machine. It's a very basic standard stitch. Let's go on up here. It is stitch number four. And sometimes you'll have two different stitches. One will go to the left and one will go to the right, depending on what you are making. Mine zigs to the left and I have the ability to mirror it on my sewing machine. So I changed it to zig to the right. Some machines just have one that goes right and one that goes left. Here are the settings on my sewing machine. It is 1.5 for stitch length. That's pretty small. That's because I want my picots pretty close together. And it is set for six wide so that I can really have it go off that edge and pull it back in. You can play with these settings. If you want a bigger pico, a longer one that is, you can make your stitch length longer. If you want to make the pico even smaller and daintier, make it not go so wide. Play with it and see what works for your fabric. So far, I've used this setting for all of my samples and I love it. So let's do it. Let's make some picots. This is a piece of cotton lycra. It has a nice stretch to it, a nice give to it. It is been folded over and then surged along the bottom edge. This basically replicates any neckband that you have on something ready-made or something that you're making yourself. Don't worry about the surging here. If you don't have a serger, you can zigzag this edge. This is just a pretend neckband. On my machine, I have 
a very standard zigzag foot. This may be the foot that came with your sewing machine and you've never taken it off. This is a great foot for this. There's another foot that I will show you how to use that can be a little bit useful, but there's nothing that you cannot do with this foot and your regular machine. So the key to making those scallops is where the edge of your fabric falls in here. So basically how far the needle is going to zig off the edge of the fabric and zag back in. This particular presser foot has these two red marks on here that you can see pretty well with the black fabric. So I am going to set the edge of my black fabric along the edge of this red mark. Now, this is going to be different on your sewing machine. You're going to have to try it out to see exactly where on your foot it falls. So let's get down to it. Okay, I've got my fabric underneath here. I'm going to put it along here along that red line. So it's going to take forward stitches and then it's going to zigzag off the edge. Look at that. It zags back in. You keep going. I'm going to keep that edge of the fabric lined up right along wherever your mark is. So it zags off. Now I'm going to slow this down and actually hands turn it so you can see exactly where the needle is falling. Okay look at that. So I'm going to get really down close there. So you can see how far off the edge that needle is. It's kind of far. It's like an eighth of an inch maybe, maybe not quite off the edge of the fabric. It's that amount of space that actually helps create these scallops. If you keep the needle very close to the edge of the fabric, it's not going to make them. It needs to be off the edge. So let's make some more. Okay, I'm going to keep lining up on the red mark. You see my fabric is kind of trying to pull underneath the center line there. Just do the best you can. Okay, now I'm going to stop here so that you can see what has been made. Look at that adorable picos. Back of it. Front of it. I like how big those picos are. If you wanted them bigger, you could actually make it go farther off the edge. So I'm going to start a new segment here and I'm going to actually put this right along the center line and we're going to compare how big the picos are. Let's compare that. So those are with it way off the edge. And those are with it a little bit off the edge. Let's put them right next to each other. I know one's the front and one's the back, but it's the best way to do it. The ones that are off the edge much more are a little bit bigger, but not a ton. So when you're doing an entire neck edge, keeping this lined up exactly where you want it the whole time can be hard, especially if you're doing it on a neck edge that you've already put in your shirt, meaning you're going around a circle. So this is when we need to use different tools. This is a tool that I love. It's an adjustable blind hem foot, but you can use it for so many different things. But in this case, we are using a blind hem stitch, so why not use the blind hem foot? I'm going to take off my sewing machine foot. It's a snap off, and this snaps right on. But before I do that, I want you to understand how it works. So this red piece it has an edge. This is where you're going to line up the edge of your fabric and you can actually push it along the edge. So that is basically an edge marker that you can move. So here is the screw and I had it all the way screwed one way so I'm going to screw it the other way and see how this has caused the red piece to slide one way so pay attention to where that um, 
that wire is and you can see how it moves so moving it back oh you can see now it's in line with the wire where it was before too far so this is in a way to adjust where you want the edge of your fabric to sit and it's a way to keep your edge very even as you sew let's put this on and adjust it so even if I had it adjusted all right, I've moved it a bunch, so it's not right now. So let's look at this. Now I'm going to test sew here and see how far off the edge of the fabric that goes. I would really like it to be a little farther off the edge of the fabric. It's just kind of barely, maybe a sixteenth of an inch off the edge. So I am going to move the screw and it moves the red piece so now when I sew and it zags it's gonna be farther off the edge so we can use this foot to keep our edge very even as we sew but you don't need the fancy foot there's nothing wrong with doing it with a plain zigzag foot. If you don't have this fancy tool, don't feel like you can't do this. This is an easy, easy technique that you can do with simple foot and all the stitches your machine currently has. You don't need anything special. Let me pull this out of here. Whoops, I've got it all caught up. And here you can see adorable little picos. Now let's take a moment to talk about some of the finer details here. If we get close to this, we can see that when I zigged and zagged back on, that bobbin thread moved all the way around to the front. This is not really a good stitch here. We really need to try to have the bobbin thread and the front thread meet each other right at the top and that will help pull down these scallops. In this case, because the bobbin thread is being pulled to the front, I would need to make the top tension less. So let's go down here. You can see that the foot I'm using actually affects the tension in this case because all of these you just saw me do. They all happened with the same machine through settings and a different foot. So here the tension needs some edit. And here at the beginning, that tension's pretty good. You can see that they're crossing right at the top of the scallop. And there we go. Adorable picos. Now remember, you can do this on woven fabric as well. But it's best if you use it on the bias. It will give you the best picos you can get. Because where the fabric is stretchy, you will get better picos. I think I'm going to have to put this on the edge of my daughter's nightgown. She is going to flip. She loves cute little girly details. Thank you for sewing with the Fabric Ninja. I really want to see what you have made. Come over to the Fabric Ninja pattern discussion group and share with us what you put this Pico edge on. Did you need different settings or a different placement on your machine? I want to know about it. Every machine is a little bit different, and this will help everyone be able to achieve this simple yet adorable technique. If you liked my video today, please press subscribe. You can also hit that little bell button, which means you'll get a notification when I have a new video.